The iPhone 6s launched in 2015. It is now 2019, making that four years on sale. Well, not quite, but we're almost at four years. Has a bunch of features that are still in newer iPhones. Should you buy the 6s in 2019? That video is coming up right now. Let's go. So let's kick this video off by talking about the design of the iPhone 6s. Of course, at this point in the game, it's pretty dated, even with the antenna lines not looking quite as clean, in my personal opinion, as the iPhone 7. You do have your second generation Touch ID scanner for this device. Also, a pretty thick bezel at the top and at the bottom, but, you know, that's what you get with the 6s. Off to the sides, it is pretty thin, though, with the classic silent switch. At the bottom, we do have a headphone jack. Something you can't get on any new iPhones today. So that's a pretty unique aspect of this device. Overall, the design is a little bit dated. Uh, it looks kind of like the iPhone 8, but just a little bit older. So you're going to have to accept that. Now, in terms of the build quality with the iPhone 6S, uh, it's pretty good aluminum. It can dent up. It can scratch up. But it's not as scary feeling as rocking a phone with all glass. So overall, I would say the build quality is pretty solid, but still rock a case with this one. Now, this does have a pretty accurate second gen touch ID. However, it's not quite as fast as what I've seen on the iPhone 8 and 8 Plus, but it's still not slow either. Now, in terms of the display, it is a 4.7 inch retina display. You get 326 pixels per inch, blah, blah, blah. It's LCD. It's not super vibrant like an OLED screen, but it has 3D touch, although, that 3D touch doesn't feel quite as fast as what I see on a current iPhone, for example, but text is plenty sharp to read and this display plays video back at a pretty enjoyable rate because it is 16 by 9 in the aspect ratio, meaning you're watching video in the way most people are shooting it in at 16 by 9 on their camera. So definitely a pretty decent display overall. It's not going to blow your socks off, but it's definitely going to be okay even here in 2019 as even the 10R has the same resolution as the panel that you're going to get for Apple's 2015 iPhone 6. So it's a thumbs up for me on the display still. Now, when it comes to software, we do have iOS 12 on board. I'm not on the exact latest. I think it's 12.1.2 right now, but you will be getting updated for several years to come still, as Apple has shown that they're not going to leave their old phones just lagging behind. Even the 5S, which is like two smartphones before this, has the update to the latest software. So getting new features like screen time, most of the core experience here on iOS is the same. No matter if you're using an iPhone 6S, iPhone 5S, 6, 6 Plus, 7, 7 Plus, 8, 8 Plus, 10, ah, you get it. iOS is iOS. So on all of these phones here, 6s and 6s plus you should be fine for at least a couple years to come now when it comes to performance apple 89 cpu two gigabytes of ram in-house gpu means that performance is still slick and definitely operational functional on the day-to-day -day. you're not getting that eight gigabytes of ram that 10 gigabytes of ram on these super fast new flagships and 3d touch like i said earlier is not as fast as some of the newer ones but you got a blazing fast shutter speed in the camera touch id second gen still pretty quick here for the success and also multitasking is not bad although this is an area it might struggle performance is basically on point here still pretty good in 2019 the battery life however is not super amazing i actually have a pretty low capacity on here i forgot to change the battery out so you've probably seen this battery drain a lot throughout this video and uh, pretty quickly but at the same time if you have a 100 percent battery health you should be able to get through i'd say half your day if you're a really light user, you don't use your phone that much, you just text call, open an email here and there, make a call, you should be able to get through a day. But heavy users, this phone is definitely not one that you're going to appreciate when it comes to battery life. Take a look at the 6S Plus if you're going to use your phone quite a bit throughout the day. Overall, I would say I get around four hours of on-screen time with a really high capacity battery. But other than that, battery life to me is just medium to average here on the iPhone 6. Nothing you're going to go brag about to your friends. Now, the phone call quality for this device has actually been okay sans the speaker. So the speaker is not that great here. It's a little bit tinny, but overall callers could hear me. I could hear them 
and the signal strength was okay. Let's put it this way. This is a basic smartphone call quality. It's not amazing. It's not horrible. It does the trick. And I think most buyers of this device right now are not really going to care about it in 2019. Now, in terms of the camera, it has a 12 megapixel eyesight camera with a very similar software to most iPhones. Although you don't see portrait mode in here, this doesn't have the dual lens that was introduced with the iPhone 7 Plus, and you won't find, you know, the 4K 60. You have up to 4K 30 on here, which should be plenty enough for a smartphone. And the 6S still has pretty good quality on the front as well, five megapixel sensor up there. And overall, the image processing is pretty good for this smartphone. So I don't think most people will be disappointed at the price point they're gonna get a 6S at. It's not too bad you do have you know regular hdr so that can still give you a little bit of a boost in dynamic range overall go ahead and let me know what you think about the camera right now i took a few samples and a couple of videos judge it for yourself i think it's overall pretty good not great One thing users will appreciate about the iPhone success is that it's still a compact and pocketable device. Most of the newer phones out there are still a lot more hard to reach the top of the screen side to side. This one is not that big of a deal here. It's actually pretty small. It still has reachability. And moving on to audio, headphone jack is available. Most people have moved on from headphone jack, but if you still have, you know, any headphones that use it, it's not a bad thing to have it. Having one speaker grill though, however, is a little annoying because you can easily cover this up if you're watching a movie, showing off a video, or just doing anything related to audio. And this top portion is not a speaker. This is just for listening to phone calls, this earpiece up here. So don't get fooled. That's not a speaker here for the success. Overall, audio is acceptable, average at best, nothing that's gonna blow you away for the success. So should you buy the discontinued iPhone 6? success in 2019 well if you want to enter the ios ecosystem on the low and you could find one i'd say sub 300 dollars then yes i think it's a decent deal the competition on the android side has many cheaper phones that look way better than this in terms of design but they are android they're not going to be updated probably even as long as this older success so it's a decent option but don't be expecting anything super innovative this is pretty basic iphone Thumbs up if you enjoyed it here. Comments, questions, concerns, drop them down below. Nick here helping you to master your technology. Thank you very much for watching. Be sure to be well and peace.